Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to the WB Mason Coach Report with Dennis Papadatos, the head coach of Hofstra Wrestling. Good morning, Coach. How's it going today? Uh, good. Just getting set up for the new week, right? Yeah, getting set up for the new week here as well. Uh, you guys opened your dual meet schedule this past weekend at the Garden State Grapple down in New Jersey. Uh, a pair of losses to uh, nationally ranked Rutgers in Wisconsin, but within those uh, res- those you know team scores, I think we had some good performances from some of the guys. Uh, Ricky and Zach, they both won their matches against uh, Rutgers, and then in the Wisconsin match, Joe had a nice pin of his opponent, and Trey and Charles both knocked off a couple of uh, nationally ranked top 15 guys. Uh, let's just talk about uh, the individual performances from Wisconsin really quick, especially, you know, Charles getting that late decision win and then uh, Trey getting his uh, overtime uh, decision win over his guy. Um, I mean, we, we, we knew we could win those matches and that's why we're there, right? We, we put this, when we originally put this event on our schedule, um, after this week, both those teams are going to be ranked in the top 12. Rutgers will probably go to like six or seven. And Wisconsin slowly creeping up to uh, they're, they're going to be ranked higher because they have a bunch of freshmen that are performing at a very high level. So um, no one wanted to give them their credit until you earn it, which is fair. Now those guys are they have a couple of freshmen that are doing really well. We beat one of them. But um, mm-hmm. um, so we went to this event originally, you know, when we have our whole lineup, we like our we want to wrestle these teams. We're, we got a lot of guys out. So at the end of the day, we're you know, we, we we made our bed. We're going to sleep in it. We're going, right? We got to compete no matter who we're going to put out there. So we also went with the idea of we still have a few, you know, some of our good guys that need these matchups. And to be honest, all those guys that needed those matchups did, did well. You know, he, even Zach that lost to the sixth guy from um, Wisconsin, he was losing by a point and then just went for a big move to try to win, you know, and, and, and Charles, Charles, the guy from Rutgers is, you know, ranked fifth. He's a freshman because he was a freshman last year and he made it to the national semifinals. You know what I mean? The, the kid, the kid may win it. Um, and it was, you know, uh, it was a good match. So, but individually, um, you know, we pulled out some wins and we went out there to show that, our, you know, our guys belong with a lot of those guys. And, and for Charles, he felt a lot of redemption because Charles's first match in a Hofstra single was against that kid and he lost 17 to two. And then that kid was at Lehigh at the time. Mm-hmm. Then we wrestled that kid in the EIWA quarterfinals and he beat us 8-1 that same year. And now that kid was at the national tournament last year as well. He's been ranked top eight in the country. I think he was around a 12, you know, lost no American round. And now we beat him. So, um, you know, Charles looks at it as, you know, progress, obviously, which is, it is, right? So, um, so that was good. And, 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 you know, Zach had a nice win against, uh, a, a Rutgers kid that beat him in freestyle, even though we didn't think it should have happened. Um, but he did. The kid beat us in freestyle at, you know, a few months ago. The last time they wrestled, that kid beat us by 10 points. Um, we thought we were better than him. Zach went out there to dominate and show that he was, and he did. And then um, wrestled well against Hilger of Wisconsin. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, Ricky's first match, you know, uh, wrestled better than he did the second match, even though the second appointment was better. I also, I thought Ricky let things get out of hand. Uh, Joe battled tough, stayed in a good situation, put a kid in the back. And, you know, um, you know, the wrestling world's making a big deal about Trey's uh, beating Braxton Amos, but, you know, we're, Amos is a freshman, but he's not really a freshman. He was, um, he deferred a year. He's like, pre, I think he's probably 20 years old, right, as a true freshman. So, um, you know, he was like the number one recruit in the country coming out of high school. And then he deferred a year and went to, um, you know, the Olympic training center. And then, and then um, came in as a true freshman was the number one recruit in the country. Again, uh, in that time, he wrestled well in freestyle. He, he qualified for the Olympic trials in both weight classes. He just came a few weeks ago, probably four or five weeks ago. He just won the junior world championships in freestyle and Greco. So he just beat Iranians and Russians to win the worlds yeah. at the 20 year old, at 20 year old and under world class. And then he ran into Trey and he was six and zero on the year thinking he was just going to, you know, steamroll Trey. And I'll be honest, we out wrestled him worse than what the score said. We out wrestled him worse than what the score said, but yeah. it was a good win. And that's why the wrestling world is all over him. Um, because, you know, the preseason favorite have that kid making the NCAA finals this year as a true freshman against uh, Ferrari from Oklahoma state. So, uh, and he was on, Par, you know, he's five, six and zero until he met Trey. So uh, I guess he's six and one now. So um, it was a good win. You know, Trey was confident and he went out and got it. 
Yeah. 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 It was, it, was, it was a good performance by Trey. You know, good performance by everyone. Joe to get his win. Uh, Ricky to sneak in a win there towards the end. Zach just, you know, picking up his rec- Rutgers kid, God knows how many times, and just slamming him in the yeah. ground. It was a. It was a good uh, individual performances outside of, I think, the uh, the team score. And then the your dual meet schedule is continuing uh, this next weekend with another uh, triple double header the same day. Uh, Duke at 11 at 10 a.m. Excuse me. And then EIWA foe American at one. Uh, what do you see from Duke? They've got a couple of guys nationally ranked and then American They're You know, they're a conference opponent. What do you see uh, from this week's uh, this week's matchups? Duke is so dramatically improved from last year. Um, they had a lot of guys sit out last year for, you know, whatever reason. And a lot of their older guys that can be all Americans, you know, the fine silver brothers, they have a few others that they're all back and they're all wrestling and they're all wrestling well. So from what I can tell from the results so far, they're doing really well. Um, and Americans, oh, you know, it was always going to be a, a tough go. And, you know, we're still, we're still not going to be a hundred percent. I think we'll be a little closer. I think we're getting one guy back. Um, uh, we'll find out, uh, but I'm pretty sure we'll have at least one guy back barring anything else happens. So, um, you know, we're, we got to be ready to go. They're, they're both two teams that for whatever reason, they both think they can beat us. So, um, and you know, we, you know, there's no secret. We're not at full strength right now, but we still got guys that can wrestle as we just, you know, as, as that just proved. So, um, you know, we're, we're focused on us. We're focused on what we're going to do, and we're going to go out there, and we're going to put the team that we got to wrestle Duke, and we're going to put that team to wrestle American, and we feel like we're confident enough that we can come out with two wins um, with what we're going to put out there, um, no matter what we face on the other side, because we feel like we're, we're, we're a pretty good team. So uh, we, I haven't started prepping for them yet. We just we, we will start prepping for them now. Um, we're just focused on what we're going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in practice right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Duke kind of seems to program on the rise. Americans always a trick. Conference conference opponents are always tricky. Right. And this will, you know, it, it's another good chance of showing for, for Hofstra against, you know, program on the rise. And then, a, like I said, like a tricky conference opponent. It's going to be it's going to be another exciting weekend of Hofstra wrestling. Right. The the matchups are, are interesting, too. Like, Ricky's got a good kid. Ricky's kid made it to Nationals last year. So, 74. He beat mm-hmm. Roth last year in at the IWA tournament. Um that kid was at 65, 174 just for the IWA tournament. Now he's back to 65 this year. That kid's pretty good, Fitzpatrick, and they got a couple other guys. So, um, you know, it should be interesting. So we'll uh, we'll do what we can. Yeah, looking looking forward to seeing Hofstra uh, come back, come back to it this week, and then get ready for for Sunday. So it'll be this sun. Speaking of which, uh, this Sunday it will be Hofstra against Duke University at 10 a.m then uh, 1 p.m. against American. Find out how to watch this match, how to follow along with this match at GoHofstra.com. For head coach Dennis Papadatos, I am Nick Capitos. Thank you for joining us for another WB Mason Coaches.